Hey guys, welcome back to Snack Time. My name is Ben, and in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Sterling PDF. So let's check out a couple of the things that it can do, and I'll show you how the interface works. So let's do an image to PDF, and you can also make this option a favorite if that's something that you that you use frequently. I can put a little star up here that adds it to the top and makes it just a little bit quicker to find. So let's do image to PDF. It's asking us to uh, to choose our file. One cool thing is you can drag and drop. So if I drag the image over here and I can select my options, I'm going to just do uh, maintain aspect ratio, um, auto rotate PDF. It's going to be color and yeah, let's hit convert. So after a little bit of work, we see that we have our PDF ready. Let's save it and let's open it. We have our image created into a PDF. Not too bad. Well, all right, so now that we have this all saved, let's do some other things with it. Let's come in here and go back to our home page and let's crop that PDF. And so I'm going to just drag my PDF over to the web page. And so once it's here, I'm just going to uh, add my little crop box and hit submit. Actually, let's do this. Let's target those coffee cups. Hit submit. And now we're getting a save button and now we can open up our cropped version of our PDF. And there it is. Very small, but very effective. And one of the things I'm going to show you today is the ability to set it up so that you can use like users and passwords and provide accounts and logins. So if you're using it for your small business and you don't want to open it up to the world to be able to use uh, this is the perfect video for you. Um, I'll cover that towards the end of the video after I've showed you how to install it with using Portainer and Nginx Proxy Manager to handle all the SSL and the encryption. So let's do a search for Redact. This thing has an auto redaction. So you can come in here, provide it with a list of words that you want to redact, and it will go through your document, scan for those words and block out any any instances of those words that it finds. So let's do something like sample and let's drag in this PDF. All right, so we're going to look for the word sample. So as you can see from our our demo PDF here, we have a couple of instances of the word sample, so it should be pretty easy for it to find. So once we load our document in, let's hit submit. You can also use regex, which is really cool, too. Once that saves, let's open it up and check it out. Went through and blacked out any instances of the word sample that it can find. Now your luck may vary depending on, you know, where your PDF originated from. Was it like, did it come from a picture that somebody took or was it like scanned in and there was no OCR done? Uh, this PDF has the benefit of pretty much just being real text. So it's easier for it to determine, you know, where the word sample is. Uh, so let's see, what do we got? We can extract images. That's pretty cool. And what this one does is this extracts all images from a PDF, saves them to a zip file. That can be really handy. Let's try that out. Now we've selected our PDF and let's hit extract. And it wants to save the zip file. So I'm going to save that. And if we go into our zip file, we can see that we have a couple of images that were saved. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty nifty, right? Uh, we can also, you know, convert that PDF into a Word file. Maybe we want to be able to edit it. Um, also do a PDF to, to image. Uh, so all sorts of really cool things. We can also, I'm going to show you how to enable this feature, but you can do a a comic book to PDF. So like, I think it's like they use like EPUB files and it converts that to a PDF too. So this really has all the kind of basic features that you would kind of expect for a, uh, a like a lightweight PDF editor to have. It's not obviously going to replace like like Acrobat Professional or something, but for a, an individual or like a small office that needs some just like basic features, I think this should work out pretty well for you. Definitely give it a shot. And I mean, worst case, you're out a little bit of time because it is open source. Uh, so if one thing that you'll probably end up using a whole bunch is just this convert file to PDF. It supports all these different uh, file types here. So you can 
throw in a document, Excel, whatever, and it'll just convert that straight into a PDF. So it's probably one of the more handy features, um, but personally, I like the auto uh, redact. I think that's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and jump into the installation of this. Uh, for the installation, I'm going to need a couple of things. I'm going to need a computer running Docker. I'm going to need Portainer and Nginx Proxy Manager. Uh, so Nginx Proxy Manager is if it's going to be internet facing and we want to add a, a certificate on it to encrypt the traffic. Now, once that is, is configured, I'm also going to show you how to set up you know, usernames and passwords for this so you can kind of protect it if you are using it for your small business. That way nobody can hop in and just start using your resources to work on their PDFs. So, so the very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to set up a subdomain for this. Uh, so let's go to add a new record. We're going to make it an A record. Uh, we're going to call it, uh, let's just call it Sterling. And the IP address we're going to use will be the same one we have here, my external IP address. I'll save that. I'm going to type in Sterling PDF. Yeah, type that right. Cool. That's the very first one. And let's scroll down. Let's find out a little bit about their Docker deployment. So if we keep scrolling, keep scrolling, just keep swimming. There we go. And we have the command line that we could use if we didn't want to use Portainer. For me, I'm going to use this Docker Compose file because I want to add some extra protection to my instance. Since it is going to be internet facing, I don't want everybody and their brother hopping on and just creating whatever PDFs they want to. So let's do this. I'm going to copy this compose file. Let's hop over to Portainer. Let's go to our stacks and let's go to add stack. I'm just going to call this Sterling and paste that information in there. So since I am going to be routing all my traffic through Nginx proxy manager, I probably don't need to have the ports exposed to the internet. In fact, I definitely don't want that. I'm going to put some hashtags or dollar signs in front of those two uh, variables there. And I want to control the volumes that it's going to be using. I like to manage them from within Portainer instead of just having them out there in my um, file system somewhere I can't really easily track down. So let's remove this dot slash Move this dot slash uh, custom files. Ah, sure, why not? Let's just go ahead and enable everything. So let's remove this patch tag here. And let's take a look at logs too. Nothing wrong with that. All right, so let's backspace over those and backspace over those. And I'm going to show you uh, why we're doing that. So we're doing that so that if I go to volumes on my my portainer instance, I'm going to see, you know, a good name that I can identify, not just a bunch of random characters. And I'm also going to know exactly where the file is being stored. That's another added bonus. But in order for that to succeed when we do deploy the stack, I do need to establish those as volumes uh, within this Docker compose file. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to do here. It's very easy. I'm just going to type in volumes and then I'm going to hit enter. And I'm going to do a tab here and I'm going to define each one of my volumes. I'm just going to copy and paste and do training data. I'm going to do a colon and I'm going to go here and I'm going to do extra configs. Same thing, paste it and colon. Custom files, yeah. Paste, colon. And lastly, logs, paste, colon. All right. So since this is a stack, it's going to create its own network, which I'm totally cool with. But now we need to define a couple of extra security uh, settings in our Docker Compose file. Because if we just leave this as false, then there's not going to be any sort of login prompt whenever you go to, you know, your website, which if that's your intention, you know, feel free. I'm going to make it so that they have to authenticate. So I want to enable security. Uh, that option that you have uh, that I showed you where you can convert like EPUB files to PDFs, that is right here. By default, that is false. But we can make it true. And that way you can convert those EPUBs to PDFs. So if you're converting like comic books, 
That's pretty commonly they're in EPUBs. And we do have a couple of other settings that we need to add in here, but I want to show you where to find them first. So let's go back to our GitHub, scroll down a little bit past the languages. Here's all the security settings and the customization that you can do either by defining them in, in environments when we're deploying this with our portainer, or there's also a, a configuration file that you can manage that's within that file system. It's under config data, but I find it's just as easy just to use the environments. That way we don't have to go digging into our uh, file system and modifying text files. So a couple of things that we want to do here. I want you to take note of something uh, very special. It says right here, this one line can sometimes throw you for a loop. So it says to have these uh, via an environment variable, you will have to have the security enable login. And I wanna show you what that looks like. Basically, what you're going to be doing is you're gonna be adding these environment variables, but they're gonna look a little different than you see them here, but you'll see you know, what I'm doing and it's gonna make perfect sense. We're gonna do minus sign, then space security, underscore enable login equals true. So do you see what I did there? I basically took that text, the smaller text, and I put security underscore in front of that. And it's the same thing for pretty much any of those commands that you're gonna find in that configuration file. So let's bring up that config file. I'm gonna be using a normal. So I'm going to say my login method, and that's just normal username and password. So jumping back here, let's do another environment variable, security underscore login method equals normal. And now we have to define a, an initial username and password. Otherwise, you're just not going to be able to sign in. Very important. Once you're in, you'll be able to manage usernames and passwords from within the software. So you won't have to do this for every, you know, like sign in. But let's do this. So you do a dash. I'm going to get ready for it. I'm going to do security underscore. And if we jump back to our GitHub, it's going to be initial login, a username and password. So let's do this. We're going to do. We're going to do a security underscore initial initial login and underscore username equals I'm just going to do the snack and I do need to do the same thing for password. I'm just going to do a little bit of copy and paste magic and I'm going to change username with password and I'm going to add a one on the end of the password. So if you want to change anything else about the platform, uh, now is the time to do that. If you did want to set up OAuth, I'm not going to do that here. It's kind of a little out of the scope for this video, but if you wanted to change the app name and change the default, you know, locale, uh, show updates, uh, pretty much any of these settings you're welcome to change. Just follow that same kind of a process by adding the, you know, the security, or in this case, I believe you'll probably end up using like system. But hopefully you're able to make sense and you're able to figure that out. I do know that that is defined uh, in other places. You kind of see it's kind of defined up here too a little bit. So you kind of see, get an idea as far as what they're thinking. Um, otherwise, you're going to be editing this uh, settings YAML file underneath the configs. So let's jump back to our portainer and let's see how this goes. Let's deploy this stack. All right, cool. We are deployed. If we go under here and check out our logs, looks like it is spinning up right now. Good. That'll give us time to set up Nginx proxy manager. So let's go to our containers. Let's go to Nginx proxy manager here. This is my app. And what I want to do is I want to join it to the same network that my Sterling PDF is running on because otherwise it's just not going to be able to talk. So let's select a network at the very bottom. Let's do Sterling underscore default and join network. Okay, cool. And just uh, for peace of mind, let's jump over to volumes and check it out. These are our Sterling uh, volumes that were created and they're under the same structure as all of our other volumes. So I know where to find stuff, but easier to back stuff up that way.
All right, so now that we have joined Nginx Proxy Manager to that network, it can communicate. I'm gonna take a couple of things here and I'm going to copy the name of the container because I'm going to need it in just a little bit. So this one is just Sterling Sterling. Copy that. And let's jump over to our Nginx Proxy Manager. And now we need to add our subdomain. So let's click on Add Proxy. And remember, we just called it Sterling. Sterling at .com. Perfect. And it's HTTP. Most of the time it is. And I'm just going to drop in the container name here so it doesn't have to worry about keeping up with an IP address that may change. And remember the port it wanted? Yep, 8080. Perfect. And let's do block common exploits, enable WebSocket support, and let's save this. And now that we're saved, we definitely want to secure this environment. We want to make sure that all the traffic's encrypted. So let's go to edit. Let's go to SSL. I'm going to request a new one. I'm going to force it and I'm going to agree to the terms and services. Spinny, spinny, spinny. And here in a second, we should have our fresh SSL. Did we type something in wrong? So because I think that, you know, you learn from your mistakes, I want to identify one that I have made that maybe you have already picked up on. I called it Sterling with an I, which is the way that it's supposed to be spelled. But if I jump back to my DNS settings, I did not call it Sterling here. So let's correct that mistake. So got it called Sterling. So I fixed that mistake. Let's save all of these changes. And let's jump back to our proxy manager. This is something that you may run into from time to time. If you do actually didn't you know, do some sort of typo or something, you'll get an internal error. It's not very helpful, but most of the time it just means that you kind of goofed on your subdomain. So I wanted to show you this mistake because I didn't want you to run into it and, and then freak out. <laughs> so let's go back. Let's hit save. And this may not work immediately. Once it's queried at one time and it's hit that URL, it sometimes takes a little bit of time for Let's Encrypt to forget about that, that old one. But in our case, hey, we got lucky. So cool, I'll take it. Let's jump over and click on our website. And if the demo gods were kind, and they were, we are now prompted with our initial login. And remember, we called it Snack and then Snack1 because we're super secure. And now we're going to sign in. Cool, there we are. Uh, so while we're in here, I do want to show you where you can set up additional usernames and passwords. So if we go under our gear icon here, you'll see that you have the option called account settings. You won't have this if you didn't enable security. Uh, so it just the button won't be there. So we click on account settings. This will open up a new window and allow you to do some little account maintenance in the back end. Uh, so we can add our API key. And if we scroll all the way to the bottom, let's click on admin settings. You're not gonna have a ton of things to be able to do back here, but one of the more important things is add new users. So we can add a new user. We can just call this Bob and Bob's password is Bob1. And his role is just a regular old user. Authentication type is web, perfect. And we'll force him to change his password when he signs in. All right, and now we have created Bob. He now exists in our platform. Uh, you can ignore our time. It's just probably off because we didn't set a time zone. Uh, we can do a little bit of you know account maintenance here. We can enable or disable the user. We can pretty much just totally nuke him out of the system completely. And we can also do a little bit of user role changing if we want to as well. So very, very basic stuff, but something that might be really helpful, especially if you're running this in like a small business. So what do you think? Do you think this is a software that you might actually use? I'd love to know your thoughts. If you want, leave a comment down below, or if you have any questions, you can also post them too. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Take care.